Here is a system of linear equations in three unknowns. One way to solve such a system is by using elementary row operations on an augmented matrix. To do that, we begin by turning this system into an augmented matrix. What the augmented matrix does is let us ignore the variables and just focus on the coefficients, really just focus on the numbers that are important to solving the system. How it works is we'll put the coefficients of the first variable in the first column, we'll put the coefficients of the second variable in the second column, the coefficients of the third variable in the third column, and then the constants will go in the rightmost column. And that looks like like this. You can see the coefficients of x1, for example, are 1, negative 1, and 3, which we see here in our first column, 1, negative 1, and 3. We also see the constants 8, 1, and 10 in the rightmost column. When we create an augmented matrix to represent a system of linear equations, it's common to have a vertical line like this separating the coefficients from the constants. However, it isn't totally necessary. Now, how do we use an augmented matrix like this to solve the system? Well, think about where we're going. We're trying to find values for x1, x2, and x3 that make this system true. So. At the end of all this, we should have three equations like this, x1 equals some number, x2 equals some number, and x3 equals some number. And if we were to write an augmented matrix for this system of three equations, it would look like this. This row just tells us that 1x1 equals a. This row tells us that 1x2 equals b. And this row tells us that 1x3 equals c. So the idea is that we're going to perform what are called elementary row operations on the augmented matrix to get it looking like this, at which point we will have our solution. Here are the three elementary row operations. They are all just things that we might do with the equations if we were trying to solve the system, but put in terms of the rows, since we're doing this with matrices. So we can multiply a row by a non-zero constant, we can interchange two rows, we can add a multiple of one row to another. Doing these things does not change the solution to the system, so we're going to perform these operations to get this matrix in what we call reduced row echelon form, which looks like what we just saw a moment ago. So here is our augmented matrix. Let's think about the first two steps we want to make. We already have a 1 here, which is exactly what we want, but we want to get zeros below the 1. So what we'll do is add row 1 to row 2. That will cancel out this negative 1. And then we'll subtract 3 times row 1 from row 3. And that will turn that 3 into a 0. So that looks like this. We're going to add row 1 to row 2. And we're going to subtract 3 row 1 from row 3. Bringing us to this matrix. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 1 plus a is 9. As for row 3, again we subtracted 3 times row 1 from it. 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0. Negative 7 minus 3 times 1 is negative 10. 4 minus 3 times 2 is negative 2, and 10 minus 3 times 8 is negative 14. Now remember what the end goal looks like. It has 1s on the diagonal of the coefficient part of the matrix, and it has zeros elsewhere. Right now, we have a negative 1 here on the diagonal, so the next thing we'll do is multiply row 2 by negative 1 in order to turn that negative 1 into a positive one. Of course, this also makes the 5 negative and the 9 negative. Now, we have a negative 10 here below this 1, and we want to turn that into a 0. So, we'll add 10 copies of row 2 to row 
3. And that gets us to this matrix here. Negative 10 plus 10 times 1 is 0. Negative 2 plus 10 times negative 5 is negative 52. And negative 14 plus 10 times negative 9 is negative 104. Now, here on the diagonal, we have a negative 52. We want it to be positive 1. So we'll multiply row 3 by negative 1 over 52. That turns this negative 52 into a positive 1, and it turns this negative 104 into a positive 2. Now, we have positive 1s on the diagonal of the coefficient part of the matrix, and we have zeros below them. The last thing we have to do is get zeros above them, and then we will have solved the system. So to get zeros above this 1, we will add 5 times row 3 to row 2, and subtract 2 times row 3 from row 1. And that gets us here. Finally, to get a 0 above this one on the diagonal, we will subtract row 2 from row 1. And that finally gets us here, exactly the type of matrix we were looking for. Positive ones on the diagonal of the coefficient part of the matrix, and zeros elsewhere. So this tells us precisely the solution to the system. The matrix we see here on the left is called an identity matrix, and the process we've just completed is called Gauss-Jordan elimination. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons going in more detail on both of those things. From this matrix, which is in what we call reduced row echelon form, we see that x1 equals 3, x2 equals 1, and x3 equals 2. And that is how we use elementary row operations and an augmented matrix to solve a system of linear equations. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to extra videos and practice, and if you join its premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in this course. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Mama. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.